Well, hello everybody, and thanks for tuning in. I just wanted to take a few minutes to show you how the text on a circle visio shape actually works and explain some of the quirks behind it. So, first thing I want to do is open the stencil. So, if you download the free version or the full version, you can just copy the stencil into the My Shapes folder, and it'll be re ready for you to go nice and handy here in the Shapes panel. So, here we go. We've got the stencil open, and there's just the three versions of the shape. So, what's that all about? So have you, as you've discovered, if you've used Visio and you've stumbled on this product, Visio doesn't really do text on a circle. So I had to build some shapes that actually do this for you. And the only way to get that to happen really without a r complicated add-in is to pre-build in a certain number of characters on the shape. So if you, if you don't have a lot of text to type, pull the small, small version, the 25 version, because it'll work a lot faster. But you can see as we select the shape and type, we get this little error message up here while we're typing. And double click again so you can see what's going on. So the shape displays up to 25 characters. The last nine characters won't be seen. So we can see right at hold tacker here, it, it sort of uh, ran out of characters to use. So this is the start to any classic German fairy tale if you're under, uh, wondering what I'm typing here. So let's just copy this text and we'll bring out the text on our circle 50 right next to it. Just double click to edit text and paste that in there. And you can see that the 50 version can handle that just fine. So when we select this thing and type, I'm going to hit F2 to get into text edit mode or you can just double click if you want to edit the text. You'll notice that we have to put the text down here that we want to show on the circle. We can't actually directly manipulate it because there's some mathematics going on behind the scenes to convert each character into an individual shape inside the, inside the, uh, the circle. In fact, if we were to open up this group, which we can do th uh, this way, we can go in here and you can see these are individual shapes like that. If I select a whole bunch of them. In fact, you can use this technique of going inside the group to change the look of certain characters and make them a little bigger or make them bold and italic, whatever. And we'll just close that group window and we'll be right back where we started. So you know how the shape is working right now. You kind of know a little bit about the insides of it. Let's explore some of the features. So we'll just keep working with the text on a circle 50 version here. And if you want to change the look of it, you, you would do it just like you would any other Visio shape. You can you can make the font size bigger just by clicking this stuff. You can change the font to let's do some crazy Berlin thing like that. It gets a little bit bigger, and you can change the fill color to something crazy like this, or we'll do that. Okay. Now when you do that, you can see that the text doesn't really look very good right here. So a couple of things we could do: we could make the circle a little bit bigger just like any other shape. And you can see there's, 50, there's 50, 50 text shapes in there, so it takes a few seconds for this thing to react. But also, you know, we don't, uh, the ring isn't really the right size. So you'll see there's a little yellow control handle here. We can pull on that, make it a little bit bigger. There's one on the inside, we can make it a little smaller. And the spacing looks a little bit nicer now. Now, you'll if you right click on the shape, you'll see there's all sorts of options here. And many of these options are actually echoed in the shape data panel over here. If you don't see the shape data panel, right click the shape, go to data, and then click shape data. And this panel will show up. So let's look at these options. We'll start at the bottom. And the background can be a ring or a no background or a disk background. So this is kind of cool if I just select this drop down and hit the arrow key. You can see it switches from disk background to no background. We'll go disk and back to ring again, like that. Now we can change the spacing between the letters. Right now I think it looks a little bit uh, spaced out, if you'll pardon the pun. There, it's like, uh, it just doesn't look good. So let's make it a little bit tighter. And you can see that that scoots them a little bit too close together for this font. So we can actually type in a custom value if we don't like the the values that are in the list by default. Now it's starting to get a little bit crazy here, and I don't know if it's the font or some of the recalculation issues that Visio has, but if it starts to look funky, 
right click on it and say refresh and sometimes that fixes some problems I think it's just the font is a little bit weird so let's pick a nicer font let's go to Berlin Sands yeah that looks a little bit better I'm gonna use Segoa too because I like the look of that so that's nice and clean the next setting up the list here is text baseline and that just is kind of where, where the line that the text sits on and if you're into fonts and things like that you'll understand more what this is but if you just play with the setting you can see it just adjusts the the baseline of the text up and down so I think it's easier just to leave the default on and then play with the actual size of the ring if you're using the ring like that now we've got the uh, we've got the this little handle here and this funny little blue circle and that's just some these dash blue lines they don't print but they're kind of showing you the size of the shape in general even though the rings extend beyond and inside of the size of the shape and also the angle of the text so you can move this around like this and put the text wherever you want so we can have it down here on the bottom we can have it on the top the setting above that we can decide whether we want to start aligned so it, the text leaves from this handle position this handle can be anywhere it doesn't matter it's just kind of an angular adjustment don't doesn't really matter where it's at or we can have it end aligned so it, the text comes around and ends at that point but I think generally center is the easiest way to work now this is easy to, to read if we have it the text kind of going across the top arc but if we bring it down to the bottom it starts to be a little bit weird it's it's starting to feel backwards and that's why we have this text orientation here where we can say uh, we have four different things right to left the ones that start with right are for scripts that go right to left like uh, sometimes a Hebrew does that and I believe Japanese can do that I think they don't really care which direction they go actually but let's just change this so right now we have left to right top let's go left to right bottom that shifts the direction of the text so now it looks right when it's on the bottom but if we go back to, to the top it looks backwards and we can shift it back to left to right top and everything's fine <coughs> the first setting in this list or the last one that we're going to talk about is to show guides and we can turn those off and you can see those those blue dash lines disappear now they don't print anyway but sometimes it gets distracting especially if you want to see how this looks in an overall picture uh, with other shapes maybe you don't want all those extra guides on but you can still manipulate the shape you can still double click and edit the text like, like that etc so we'll turn the guides back on again just so we can keep track of what we want and this thing's been for sale and uh, and the free version's been available for several years and occasionally people say how do I do um, multiple blocks of text so we'll just t we'll start typing here top arc of text and they say well now we want to write some text down at the bottom well the easiest way to do that is just to control drag a duplicate of this thing turn off the rings move the text down here change that orientation and let's just change that word to bottom okay now we can just drag that right back over here and, and we're good to go so select both of them go to align center and align middle and as long as the the two rectangles are the same size meaning this rectangle and this rectangle of this shape they'll line up just fine. Now you'll still have to kind of tweak each one individually and it's not always clear which one you're working with so maybe drag these, this handle up here so it's easy to see and drag this handle way down here so it's easy to see that that's the one I'm adjusting like that. And remember most of these options are available by right clicking the shapes so you can see all the options are available in cascading menus and there's some presets here for the angles that we want to set the text at that's actually not available here so it's always a good idea to look both at shape data and right click the shape and see what's going on um, the, the presets are kind of nice we can say we want this 
text to go at 3 o'clock, so boom, it goes directly over there. And that's so you don't have to go, oh, gee, I don't know if I quite got it just right. I, want, I really want it to be exactly at that, that angle. Well, you can do that with these presets. So let's just send that back to 12 o'clock. And there we go. So I think that shows just about every feature available on this on this shape. I hope you find the video useful and the shape even more useful. Uh, I touched on going inside the group to change things, but I'll do it one more time. Let's say we really want to emphasize the word arc. Let's just select those three letters and we'll make them bold. I used a shift select and let's just change the font to something ridiculous. And make sure you don't close Visio, just close this group window. You can see it says group up here. That shows how you're that shows that you're inside of a group editing. So that means if you close this window, it'll take us back to the drawing and we're good. So now we've got top arc, bottom arc text, and we've changed the font and size inside of it. Uh, all with a shape. No add-ins, no code to run, no signing certificates or network policies that won't allow us to install things on our machines. Just a shape to download and you're good to go. So thanks for watching everybody.